Люди же когда-нибудь были в Нью-Йорке? Have you ever been to New York? Even if you haven't, you must have seen it before. They show it in nearly every American movie. There are always a ton of people around these parts. It's Times Square. And this is what it looks like now. And this is Milan, Italy. The area next to this cathedral is always as crowded as a subway car. And look at it now, nothing but pigeons and a couple of lunatics. This is Lebanon. People went swimming and sunbathed next to this lighthouse, and now it's all abandoned, not even a seagull. This is Brooklyn Bridge, one of New York's star attractions. Now there's just a lone madman. The coronavirus has left New York in an apocalyptic state. My friend Leonid Pushkowski got stuck here. Always sirens ringing, all the time. It's like the soundtrack to the city. I'll need to go somewhere else or you won't be able to hear me. In this episode, I will show you what quarantine is like in the farthest corners of the globe. From the homeless living on the ladder on the island of Madagascar to scientists on the North Pole. I even found a secret agent from Turkmenistan to give us an update straight from the super close country. I never imagined I'd find reporters for the people in more than 40 countries, including Angola, Vietnam, Israel, Bali, New York, Madagascar, Mozambique in Africa, Argentina, Brazil, China, Japan, London, Minsk, and Los Angeles. We made this episode together. The world of the people. Hey guys, it's me, Anton, speaking English. I want to first uh, thank everyone who joined my uh, Patreon webpage and who donated me. I'm hugging everyone who sent me from $3 to $25. It was uh, really great news for me because it means that I can collect money, I can prepare for the new uh, journeys and I can uh, edit more material. So, by, by the way, if you haven't seen so far my last North Korean videos, please do it. It was, by the way, not the last one. I get some more materials and uh, all the materials I have first go to my Patreon webpage. It means that if by the time you are not a my Patreon subscriber, please go to the link in the description. Follow me on Patreon, please donate. And it means I will travel all around the globe and you will see it first. Look, people wearing medical masks, carrying rifles, jump at the passers-by and open fire. At least the bullets are all rubber. Notice how policemen wear gloves. You know, so they won't get corona through the shocker. The city has one of the highest crime rates in the world, Johannesburg. It's no Venezuela, no mass murders, but people in the district sell drugs at every corner. The reporter from here asked not to enclose her personal information, so we had another person read her messages aloud. Everything except for pharmacies and shopping centres is closed. The police are patrolling the streets, people can't walk out their dogs or cross the distributor's border. Some addicts from the ghetto were shot trying to get out of their district. Their district has food, shops, anything they need, so it was clear they were out for violence. As for Chile, the coronavirus outbreak happened almost at the same time as the revolution. Young people rebelled after subway fees were raised for the second time this year. So students and school kids started jumping over pay gates in the subway. Policemen tried to arrest them, and this all led to riots. Activists took over what it looked like back on March the 14th. And here it is now. Everything is calm. There is no panic. That's one of the pharmacies that was attacked. So now they're all boarded up. These are hot-blooded people, very much so but I've never seen people that were also so cold-blooded and obedient to the law. There's a revolution in Chile. It continues even now. But as soon as the government said, stay home, leave only with a permit, people were like, yeah, sure, we'll do that, because that's our life. That's where Maria lives. She's an illustrator. She moved here last year, searching for a better life, as they say. She chose Chile, since it's often called the Switzerland of Latin America. But riots started a month after she moved. We print a permit where we list our destination, its address, where we're going to go. Then we're given four hours depending on what kind of service we need. Let's say I need to go shopping. One of the leading shops around here, the local Walmart, introduced a restriction on purchases. No more than five of the same items for one person. The police in South Africa literally chase down people on the streets. Here they've got a woman with a suitcase. She must have been going far. 
They just put these people in police cars, all in silence, and then explain to them what's what from behind a fence. It's the same in Nepal where they catch trespassers with a special device, a long stick that grabs people by the waist. I actually think that's all just for show. No way in hell you catch someone with that. The best you can hope for is to smash someone's back with it. That's what they've been doing in India. I'm sure you've seen that some dispersing. Only a dozen countries have taken extreme measures. Here in Peru, they use tow trucks to carry tanks, howitzers and flat cannons to reinforce limits. Some districts in Israel declared martial law, and New York, where even tigers from zoos have contracted coronavirus, has seen the arrival of thousands of soldiers, most of them army medics. The government promises they'll send them on to other states too. Hello, Anton. The current situation in New York is rather ambivalent, I'd say, because on the one hand, it's the world's epicenter of the epidemic. Every day we hit worse and worse records. On the other hand, the government hasn't taken any strict, really strict measures to make the quarantine really effective, and I think it's too late for this anyway. Masks are a real problem. There's a great shortage of masks for medics, and we hear the government talking about this at every corner. They say, don't use masks, cover your faces with scarves, bandanas, or whatever. Not the masks. Leave those for the doctors. They need them more, and there's not enough. Not enough doctors either. Again, everyone received emergency messages like, we're looking for doctors, medical personnel that can work now. Alexander is a doctor from Brooklyn Hospital. He contracted coronavirus back at the beginning of March. This is how his colleagues brought him food. Go away. Just leave it. Yeah, just put it in the ground. I'm coming back. Do you know how you got infected? I don't have the slightest idea, not the slightest. Seriously. Even though I've had contact with a great number of patients, not a single one of them was COVID-19 positive. Does that mean that the virus has already spread to the point that just walking on the street is actually enough? Actually can be enough to get infected? Walking on the streets, no. But touching someone or getting in close contact with those. We recorded this interview with Alexander on the 20th of March. Since then, the number of infected in the USA has increased 20-fold. There are now almost 40,000 infected. Just during the last two weeks, 10 million people filed for unemployment benefits. They show meditation techniques on TV, encouraging viewers not to be worried about financial problems. At the same time, things are much better on the West Coast in California. The number of infected is eight times lower. Anton, привет. Тебе из солнечного Лос-Анджелеса. Anton, hello from sunny Los Angeles. Everyone is trying to self-isolate, and I only went out so that I could record with palms in the background, instead of just a plain white wall. Since people mostly stay indoors, they cross to the other side of the road if they see someone. No being shy about that. Everyone is wearing masks. People let others go first on the elevator, say things like, go on, I'll take the next one. Everyone is doing their best, and only pressing elevator buttons with their elbows, of course, washing their hands often. The shops mostly recovered from the first panic wave from three weeks ago. You can now buy almost anything, except for sanitizers and toilet paper. All food is on the shelves, and the government, at least here in California, decided that the pharmacies selling marijuana and shops selling weapons are essential shops, essential for the Americans, so they're still working. So you could buy pasta, weed, and a gun right now. The businesses are having it rough, but Trump promised to give $1,200 to all adults and $500 to all children. I was personally surprised to find out how a neighbouring country of Australia supports its citizens. How much do you think they give out now? What do you think? Hello everyone, on the line from New Zealand here. Just as many other citizens of New Zealand, almost every evening we come outside at 7 o'clock and clap our hands as a way to express support and gratitude to the people who can't stay with their families during the quarantine. Maxim and his family moved here about three years ago. He works as a designer of airports, schools and even churches. The government provides support to its citizens by giving them $585 a week. As far as I know, they also provide support for businesses and people with mortgages. Speaking of which, our landlord called us on the first day of quarantine and said that our rent was reduced by 25%, which helped us out greatly. 585 New Zealand dollars equals 352 American dollars, which amounts to 1400 bucks a month. God damn it. I really want our Russian officials to watch this episode and take New Zealand as an example, or at least Brazil. 
Their GDP is roughly the same as Russia, and they help business owners as well as the people. Ruslan owns a small construction company there. The city has many manufacturing facilities, including the Boeing company Embraer and also Chow Indiscar, a manufacturing company producing buses in great quantities. The government helps these companies pay their employees approximately 60% of their salaries, as long as they agree not to fire anyone. One of the world's biggest football stadiums in Sao Paulo has been turned into an open field hospital that can accommodate up to 200 people. For a long time, Maracana Stadium was one of the largest in the world. It's there that Pele, the famous soccer player, scored the goal of the century. He outmaneuvered the entire opposing team, moving the length of the field, before scoring at the goal of Fluminense FC. And now they're building tents. It will be an open field hospital. People are walking the streets as usual. The result is that Brazil takes first place in the number of infected in the whole of the South American continent. Here, compare it to its neighboring country, Argentina. The country has closed its borders and ordered a quarantine when there were just 100 infected. Thanks to that, they managed to hold off high infection rates and the situation in the country is one of the best in South America. It's a secret agent from Turkmenistan. Hello? 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 Just in case you've forgotten, Turkmenistan is the North Korea of post-Soviet space. For example, the president here prohibited the usage of black cars because he doesn't like the color black, and it brings bad luck. And the police not only did this, but even hunted down people with black rims on their cars. This is the country where people go missing, in prison based on slander, and can be prosecuted for something because they have said something bad about the president. Voice calls from absolutely all messenger apps are blocked in Turkmenistan. We will try to use voicemail. Tell me, are you able to listen to my voicemail? Absolutely all popular sites, such as YouTube and Facebook, are banned in Turkmenistan. VPNs are there to help out. There is only a single app that finally managed to connect me with our friend. The app automatically changes the speaker's voice. The friend sends me a message from Turkmenistan, and it automatically distorts the voice. I don't even recognize mine when I hear it. On that day, he wanted to withdraw cash, so we stood in front of a line at the ATM from 5 till 7 in the morning. But the queues are much longer than usual now, so he was unsuccessful. Successful. Right now we are showing people lining up for sunflower oil. As for the masks, they're forbidden. If they see you wearing a mask or something like that, they'll harass you of course. They'll start asking you unnecessary questions. Take you to the city dep. They'll be like, why? What for? There's no corona here. You're just causing more panic. And so on. Holy shit! As for the situation and the people's reaction, to be honest, currently, there's much panic. Because we're short on foodstuffs, and what are we, whatever we still have left is growing in price by the day at an exponential rate. Everything is growing in price rapidly. All the foodstuffs, all kinds of essentials, all of it is getting more expensive. How did the government react? As for the government, they don't care, to be honest. They pretend they don't see anything, but things are going great. Everything's fine under the Iron Curtain. They pretty much don't care about what's going on on the inside. The word coronavirus is forbidden here, like a criminal organization. You can't say the word coronavirus aloud. They also put up a lot of flyers. They don't mention the word coronavirus, but they describe all the symptoms, all the symptoms. The day that we spoke, two patients with suspected COVID-19 were found in the city where our friend lives. God forbid. I have no idea what will happen if they really are infected. It'll be full on anarchy here, because there's no medicine, no respiratory masks, no equipment, and we have like only one of those mechanical ventilators in our hospital for the entire time. And it's most likely a relic of Soviet times. Almost every day, you know, we get the so-called handouts from state-owned shops. Sometimes it's flour or sugar, meat on a rare occasion, butter and so on and so forth. We get them at a very, very low price compared to what's going on in all the other sh stores. So that's why people stand in queues from five or six in the morning. Sometimes you can come up and ask, what are you standing for? What are they giving out today? And they say, we don't know. They just say, we don't know. We hope they at least give us something. And sometimes people stand in line the entire day and don't get shit. Do you understand? masks are no longer forbidden, but there aren't any in stores. Iran, that's a shopping mall, no kidding. They put up 3,000 beds. It's all just for show, of course. 
Tons of people in this country have never seen such equipment. It's still impressive. In London, they put up a new morgue and additional medical beds. Check it out, they have name tags. Andre worked in a London restaurant. Now he's saving up to open a business. Everyone is afraid of using public transport. The trains in the centre of London are all empty. People still go outside, many are riding bicycles. Families walking around. In the span of just one month, the number of infected in Britain went from zero to over 50,000. The new virus takes advantage of people going outside, as they probably think the coronavirus is almost the same as seasonal flu. In terms of health, maybe. The flu might even be worse, but as for its transmission rate, Вот смотрите, обычный грипп имеет рейтинг распространения 1.3. Take a look at seasonal flu. Its transmission rate is 1 to 3. It means that one infected person will infect two more people at best. So we'll get 56 infected through 10 transmissions. COVID-19 has a transmission rate of 2. And that's how it goes. If one person infects two people, then each of them two more. Then it's over 2,000 infected through 10 transmissions. Seasonal flu cannot spread this quickly. It's no wonder that the virus has somehow spread even to the North Pole. A research vessel, the icebreaker Polarstern, left port in Norway and had been frozen in the ice to survey the Arctic Ocean for a year. Unfortunately, the pilot that was supposed to fly this ship from the nearest land base on Svalbard contracted coronavirus and his flight was delayed. The only possible way to limit the spread of the virus is just to stop meeting up with people. The harsher the measures that are taken, the better the results will be. An example from China. Sviatslav lived in China for five years, but recently flew away for business. Once he returned, he was put under quarantine. Now a man with a gas mask has replaced his alarm clock. A man with this thing, he walks down all the halls and disinfects them. That's what it looks like. He can't even leave his room, not to mention go outside. Notice how the hallways and entrances are draped with these curtains. They also have a special system. They put up some kind of sensors that will spot you if you're trying to go outside. Sometimes they put up cameras too. And so people don't have the opportunity to leave their house. They thought this through, like, people come by to collect garbage. Three months after enforcing severe measures, China stands with only 80,000 infected in all of its 1.5 billion population. Iskander and Rosa are studying in Beijing. They still have to ask the concierge's permission to go out. Good day. Hello, Iskander. Can you register us? You need to go out? Yes, to the shop. Of course, go on. Beijing is actually built in such a way that the districts are separated like this. So there is a fence and several entrances, as I've already shown. There are guards at these entrances who don't let people in without permission. Without a special pass. And now there are days in China when they don't find any new infected. People in Belarus, another interesting country, don't take coronavirus seriously until recently. Anton Zdorova, Minsk. Hello, Anton, and Minsk here. So about the situation here. The government has only recently disclosed the number of infected. And until then, we hadn't been in this, you know, uncertain kind of state. People started panicking, spreading rumors. They said that in Vitebsk, uh, I pointed to my back like Vitebsk is there. People from Vitebsk say there was an epidemic, some kind of outbreak. I started asking my subscribers and they were all like, dude, there were like so many infected, so many people dead. We don't listen to rumors, of course. So about the situation on the whole, there is no quarantine here, just for some. Recommendations from the Ministry of Health. I didn't see anyone wearing masks as far as a week ago, maybe. Like only taxi drivers and Asians that were queuing up in stores. Yeah, but I saw a couple of people wearing masks today. It seems everyone is beginning to understand that this is a serious situation and we really should be looking for ways to protect ourselves somehow. The effect of people wearing masks on masks could be seen in Japan. Wearing masks is not something that the coronavirus brought to Japan, but something that's been here for a long time, as far as 30 years ago when I first came. That was, well, I felt like people wearing masks in the streets were like aliens to me. But it's the way it is here. Fewer masks in summer, but there are some too. It's not to protect themselves from pollen, from diseases, so as not to spread diseases themselves, like try not to infect others with a simple cold. And that has yielded results. There are now only 5,000 infected, but the government has declared a state of emergency. As far as I know, people are forbidden from approaching Sakura trees. That alley, the famous Sakura alley, is all closed. The island countries are completely opposite. People are just chilling. It's warm and you can live under the palms with coconuts for dinner. The Maldives, a giant queue in front of the ATM. 
People care less about the virus and more about withdrawing cash. Roman got stuck on Madagascar, off the southern coast of Africa, because of his job. It's forbidden to leave your hotel, flat or house after 8 in the evening. Well, this restriction only applies to foreigners or more or less wealthy people, because there is a giant number of homeless in Madagascar, a whole army of them. It doesn't apply to them. That's where they sleep, and they relieve themselves right here. It's the very center of the city. Few people stay at home because they need to make a living. The taxis in Madagascar are working illegally. Very few people are working and they all charge very high rates. And then the police stopped us on our way and I had to pay a fine of 100,000 in their currency. It's about $30. It's the same in Bali. Pavel from Ufa is there. Quarantine is different for everyone, but people in Bali are doing great. Fishing, getting married, no plans have changed whatsoever. Pavel came here to spend the winter. He was low on money, just about to head home. People are driven out of their rented flats. My paid period ended a few days ago, but I got lucky and struck a deal with my landlords. They agreed to let me stay for one more month for a token amount of money. I don't know what I'd do otherwise. Maybe I'd live at the beach, but I actually got very lucky. On the 4th of April, Russia temporarily suspended flights, which were supposed to bring Russian citizens home. So there are thousands of people in the same situation all over the world. Slava is stuck in Colombia, but at least he has a place to live. Most people are wearing masks. They are mainly store-bought, but a large part of the population can't afford them, so they make them from whatever they can find. Their neighbours in Cuba make them out of bras, the old-fashioned way. Keeping their hands busy and making good money. Everyone's looking for ways to make money these days. Here's an example of another very closed country, Saudi Arabia. My friend Evgeny from Dubai got stuck there. There are many people in cities, in this city, trying to make money any way they can. For instance, I was taking a cab and there was this man. He was already quite old, but from what I could gather, he had to get a job to make a living. He was working for Uber because right now it's the only source of income for many people, but it's also dangerous. And people in Malaysia aren't afraid of a damn thing. The curfew here starts at 8. By the way, I wanted to show you a very popular thing here, setting up cafes right in your house. Misha Hapio lives in Malaysia. He's doing a master's degree in data processing. There must be no more than one person in a car. It's often even your own neighbours snitch on you, and then the police come to your place to file a report. Priests in Lebanon are driving around the city on the evening of a local holiday, throwing holy water on people and houses, but people are worried about something else. People are coming outside to protest because there are no jobs, no money, no food. People come outside and protest on the streets. In order not to endanger the police force, many countries have surveillance drones to deter violators. Such examples are Colombia and Dubai, where they use not only drones, but also special cars that disperse people, including my favourite Pakistani workers. Sanjar, my friend from Dubai episode, who helped me dig out my car in the desert, is there now. You can't understand where I am by the background, because I'm in the hallway. I don't think we'll be leaving our flats beyond the hallway during the next two weeks. They're about to introduce a 24-hour curfew. There are drones flying in Mexico too, but people are walking freely. You can fly here now to wait out the quarantine. Привет, меня зовут Святослав. Hello, my name is Sviatoslav. I'm from Ukraine. I live here in Mexico City. There are a lot of street vendors here, so coronavirus strikes hard at the simple people who live on what they do and what they sell throughout the day. Maybe that's why it took the country so long to introduce quarantine. They haven't really taken measures like closing the borders. You can still come and leave at will. It's the same in Vietnam. People are riding bicycles, everything's still open. You can go have a cup of coffee. Tons of people are coming home from work. I really hope that the epidemic won't reach this country, because otherwise, considering the local recklessness, things will get pretty bad pretty quickly. Surprisingly, the situation in African countries is very different. I thought no one there would care about the virus. Here's Angola. Guzel is working as a teacher there. You can only leave if there is an actual need, like buying food, taking out the garbage, walking your dog. You can go to the bank, but they only let one person inside at a time. There are only 16 cases in Angola. Another example is Mozambique. Hi, my name is Solomon. Hi, my name is Solomon. I'm from Mozambique in Africa. My English is not very good. The situation here is quite all right. We have only 10 infected here in Mozambique. Even though Cyprus is a European country, unlike Britain or France, there are only 500 cases of COVID-19 as of the beginning of April. I'm here at Limassol, Cyprus. You can only go outside once a day. 
It requires a special permit you can receive by sending an SMS message to a short number and waiting for an answer. There's only a couple of cases in Syria. Hello everyone, my name is Nona. I'm currently in Syria in the city of Tartus. It's the country that survived through 10 years of a horrible war. It's also one of the countries that closed all of its borders and schools after the first corona case. As of now, there are 16 infected and two deaths. And the progressive countries that one would think would have treated the situation seriously, for some reason have not. Here is Iceland. Alexander from St. Petersburg works as a driver and a guide here. Greetings from snowy Iceland, where quarantine is yet to be introduced. You can still come outside, still go to your work, travel outside the city, visit your friends, no problems, no restrictions, no police on the streets. They only ask not to gather in groups of more than 20 people. There are almost 2,000 cases on this little island country. Another example is the ultra-developed Israel. Nine thousand cases as of the beginning of April. There is this religious ultra-orthodox part of the population who don't watch TV, who don't actually have TV sets and access to TV channels. They don't have internet access, they don't use it, so they actually didn't even know coronavirus even existed. That's why their leaders had to speak to them and say that such a problem now exists in the world. So don't gather in big groups, don't visit synagogues. They denied this for a long time and went to synagogues anyway. Then the prayers were cancelled. And since the religious part of the population had a hard time accepting these restrictions, Israel's religious city of B'nai B'raik was closed a few days ago. There are now checkpoints at the entrance. Australia. Maria has been living here for four years, working as a healer of all things. She's not treating COVID, she's a private healer. It's official, she pays the taxes. There were a couple of incidents in shopping centres a few weeks ago. People were buying up toilet paper and flour for some reason. These shelves are now empty. Now they've introduced strict rules about not buying more than two of the same items for one person, and people comply. My name's Alexander. I've lived in Australia for seven years. There are wash basins at the entrance for people to wash their hands. Shelves are all full. That's the famous Bondi Beach. That's the promenade. As you can see, there are few people. But unlike in other countries, people in Australia are allowed to go out jogging. France finally came to its senses. The growth here is enormous, and that's what the Eiffel Tower looks like now. I am now next to this famous landmark. A couple dozen people walking around down there, two or three cars pass by every minute. After looking into the situation of over 50 countries, I can say that none have enforced the restrictions as strict as in China. An interesting coincidence is that China is also the only country to have overcome the peak of the virus. Something to think about.